Well, hey friends, welcome back to Figure It Out. I am really excited about today's unboxing. We're gonna take a look at the new Indiana Jones Adventure series. And we're gonna take a look at the five figures from Raiders of the Lost Ark brought to us by Hasbro. So one of the things that Hasbro has done for their packaging is they've taken away all plastic. And I guess that's part of their green initiative because they certainly do put it on their uh, packaging. So there's no window, no door to open this up to actually see the figure before you can, um, well, before you open it. So you can't really see what you're getting. So there's a little bit of trepidation as far as that's concerned. I don't collect a lot of Hasbro figures, so, um, you know, we'll see. Anyway, so you can see the packaging. We do have, uh, it's a gloss on the figure. So the picture that is Indiana Jones, you can see that reflecting in the lights of the studio here. So you can see that. Um, it does tell you that you can build an artifact. So as we pull all this out, we're gonna build us the Ark of the Covenant. And then on the back, it just tells you what all is included. I'm excited to open this up and see what all he looks like. Very interesting packaging choice that they are going to take the figure and wrap it in tissue paper, which I was not expecting that. Let's open this up. It's actually a little tissue sleeve, so we can pull the figure straight out of the sleeve. The tissue paper itself has that very classic Indiana Jones print map on it. All right, let's talk for one second about uh, some of the key aspects of what I believe makes a good action figure. Uh, first is stability. I, in, in messing with these things for a little bit now, um, they actually stand up really well without a base. So I was actually quite pleased with the balance and the way that you can put them in some various positions and they hold up, they don't fall over. So I really like that about these figures. You know, one of the things that I sometimes complain about is that they'll put these action shots in the boxes, but you can't always get the figures to do what the box does. So <clears throat> I thought, well, maybe I can see if I can get these guys to be in the same pose as what is on the box. And if I can get them to pose just right and stand in the same way, the same fashion, and they'll actually stand, maybe that could be pretty cool. So, Looking at Indiana Jones, with the exception of the fact that I can't necessarily get the whip to form the way that I'd like it to, I'd say that's pretty close. Now, I'd also suggest that Major Arnold Tote uh, also easily posed. I mean, this is not a very dynamic figure. You know, I know that they have the black gloved hand on the box, but since this is just sort of an easy pose, I really wanted to get that scarred hand and kind of have him in the same pose as he would in the movie when he first shows you where they um, they get the image of the head of the staff. Sala is a bit of a different story. Now, uh, you know, they, they show on the box how they can actually bend their arms and articulate and the box itself, it shows over here that he's almost gripping the rope. There is no way that they could get that to be done in real life. Uh, his thumbs in the way. I'm thinking that for the picture either they did a little Photoshop magic or they actually cut this figure's thumb off in order to make it look like he's gripping. I mean, I can get it close and these are little tiny gripes, but it's it's close, it's decent, but uh, not really getting it the exact same as we can in the picture. But you know what? It's all right, I still like it. So he's pretty close. Belloc, again, not a very dynamic uh, pose on the front of the box, but he still has a pretty stable base. He stands really well, so I like that. Um, the only issue with mine in particular, just, I, and I don't know if this is the same for all of them, is that his wrist holding this, um, holding the staff is super loose in the socket. And so sometimes I get this sort of sag wrist thing that's happening here. He doesn't always hold the pose. One that I felt like was most problematic was Marion Ravenwood. First of all, the arm bend does not nearly, it doesn't nearly bend as much as what you see in the picture there. If I try to turn it to where it's like, I cannot bring this arm around 
in the same way, as try as I might to match that picture, I can't do it. It just doesn't work. They make it look like that monkey just perch up there, but I'm telling you, it does not in the same way that they have that there. As much as I have tried to put this thing on here, I mean, you're just gonna have to really, really do a balancing act with this monkey. The monkey doesn't sit like it does in the picture. Oh. Doesn't rest on her arm as much as you'd like for it to. Like he, they have him in the picture just really sitting up and looking pretty cool. I'm assuming they use some sort of adhesive to get the monkey to stay on there. Monkey doesn't stay. Okay, the only way I could really get it to stay, I mean, I could get it close, but I mean, if there's any movement around this thing, that monkey's gonna take a dive. So like, I don't even wanna breathe on it, but uh, yeah, this is about as good as I can get it. Another thing that I look at is the realism, how realistic are like, particularly, especially when we're talking about um, figures from movies, how realistic are their faces? And so we, you know, usually they can get the clothing, they can get, um, you know, dimensions and things like that. But man, when it comes to faces, that gets really difficult. And of course, as you go higher end, uh, a lot of action figures, they do that really well, but you're paying for it. Let's take a, a close up look at Harrison Ford's character. Let's see what his face actually looks like. So as you can see, getting in, in light, you definitely can see some Harrison Ford in that face sculpt, but it's just not quite there. Not on the same level as what you would hope for when it comes to looking at those, you know, the sculpts. And I would suggest that kind of all of them are like that in some way, that they're not quite there, that they're just slightly off. You know, you sort of get what you pay for, but I feel like, man, with uh, the way they do these sculpts now, they ought to be able to get them a little bit closer. So kind of a little disappointing. Let's talk now about a little bit of the articulation. So unlike a lot of other uh, action figures, these are have single joints. And so you do get bends in the arm, uh, a little above 90, but not much beyond that. Same thing with the legs. You can get the legs to just past 90, but not much beyond that. Posability wise, they're pretty stable, but as far as articulation, they're maybe not quite as on the same level as some others that we have seen that maybe are better, a little bit better offerings when it comes to that posability. All right, assessing each figure individually, let me just go through each one. I wanna bring them a little closer to the camera here. So taking a look at Sala, um, the thing that I do like about it, I think they've done well on a lot of the details, a lot of the paint details. You see that we do get some um, paint accents across the, the outfit. You know, it's just not, it's not just flat painted, so we have some dry brush that is going around. Uh, definitely demonstrating that this person has been out in the desert, so I do think they did a good job on that. Great job on sculpting the scarf. He does come with uh, shovel, which is relatively just kind of flat, and also his coiled rope. Marion Ravenwood's uh, figure may be the most, I guess, flat as far as the paint is concerned, but they did do a good job. Um, I just think there could be a little bit more paint detail in her face. She does come with this monkey, which surprisingly is actually, I guess, better done than she is, if that makes sense. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this guy. So detail on the paint, you can see there's uh, gold accents on, now just look at how small this thing is. I mean, I'm just barely, you know, my hand. Um, it also has articulation where his arms move and his head swivels around and his tail moves in its socket. You can, 
you know, twist it, pose him however you want with his tail. So I was actually kind of, I was a little bit more impressed with this accessory than I was with the figure when it comes to the time they spent uh, to put this thing together. So with moving parts, some gold paint, um, some gradient texture on the fur, uh, which you can see here, uh, it's actually for what you get and for as small as this thing is, um, they did a really good job with it. Nice. I mean, she also comes with this very, you know, it's just a pan. There's nothing to it. There's no other paint to it. It's very uh, kind of a throw in plastic uh, piece. All right. Major Arnold, you see here, as far as details are concerned, again, paint on this one is also a little flat, a little bit more like uh, Marion. They, he does have this removable hat, which is okay. I mean, it's decent. It stays on really well. I did think that the glasses and the paint job on the face was not good. And so as we zoom in on that, you can see um, it just kind of misses the mark a little bit, which I'm not exactly sure what we would need to do in order to make that better, but um, I just think it could have been a little better. They did do some interesting texture here on the cloak or his overcoat. Um, I think the thing that's the real winner for this figure is the scar that he has on his hand. I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can on my camera, but I think that's actually pretty cool that they have that as a detail and they show that there. So, um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, the cloak does come off. And so if you wanna pose him without the cloak, you certainly can. He also comes with a couple of accessories. He does come with uh, if you don't want the scar hand, you can have his glove hand, which is also in pull trigger formation because he does come with his uh, sidearm, this um, I think is a Ruger pistol. So it does come with that, um, which is well done to scale. And then he also has an interchangeable head. And so I'm gonna zoom in on this. This is the end of the movie. And this is when he begins to melt spoiler alert so um, so as he begins to melt and let me let me get as close as I can on this as well um, I gotta be honest a little gruesome for what you might consider to be a a toy it's fine for a collectible in my opinion I mean that's fine I love it I think it's absolutely fantastic I'm, I'm really happy they included this in this particular um, with this figure so well done all right, and then here's Belloc with the ceremonial garb from the end of the movie. They did a good job. Again, it's maybe just a little flat. There's not the dry brush that we have on some of the other figures. You know, kind of one of the annoying things is this is supposed to be this heavy chest piece, but it, whereas yes, it's definitely loose on the figure, it rides up because that plastic or that uh, rubber is just not uh, holding it down like it should. And then of course we have our man, Indiana Jones. So getting a little closer, they um, they definitely did some dry brush to demonstrate wear on the hat, but you can see that they have this lighter kind of copper look, which shows a lot of wear on his um, iconic hat. They did the same kind of dry brush on his leather bomber jacket. You can see uh, this texture that they put in there, this added, uh, um, hitting these highlights with the paint. So it really makes it look like he's got this faded jacket on there. So great job on that. Uh, they just continued some of those details throughout this figure, uh, which makes it look really cool. My one complaint, and it's not a big one, but it is one which it seems like they could have figured this out by now. He does have a, he comes with uh, the whip that is unfolded, but he also comes with a coiled whip, all right, which is this piece right here. And there's a place um, that you can hang it right here on the belt. And it has um, this tab that's supposed to loop up. Okay, maybe if I show this sideways, you can see it. Okay, this tab that's supposed to loop up like this, and it sticks in a little recess, a little hole. It's got a tab on it and it sticks, that tab, that little peg, if you will, sticks in on the belt. And it's supposed to hold it there as I I've put it there, I don't know, a dozen times. I've tried to stick it in that hole, but what it does do is it just unfolds. It pops right back out because, you know, this rubber, this plastic has a memory. And so it will not 
stay in that hole. It just sort of unfolds. Small complaint, like I said, I mean, I really like the figure. I think that they did a great job with the details. Uh, maybe could have done a little better on the face, which we talked about, but, um, but the details on the figure and what it looks like and its posability, you know, that sort of thing, I think that is absolutely fantastic. So, so it does come with, I guess you'd say six different hands, uh, four that are loose, <clears throat> but it also comes with really crazy excited about this, the gold idol that was there at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> I'm so glad they included this because I would love the diorama I want to do has to do with this right here, this part. Uh, the jungle scene at the very beginning, super cool. So I'm glad they have uh, the idol as a part of this figure. So it was one that I didn't notice right off the bat, but when I opened up the box and um, this came spilling out, I was super geeked about it. So really excited to have this piece in, included with this Indiana Jones. And then finally, we have the Ark of the Covenant. This is the artifact that comes with, it's the build an artifact, which I mean, I've heard of build a fig and, you know, build an accessory or something like that. <clears throat> I don't know if the kids are super geeked about an artifact. I was pretty excited about it. I thought, well, that's kind of a cool ad. In my honest opinion, I think I would have preferred maybe instead of build an artifact, have maybe build a fig and like the figure of um, maybe the uh, uh, plane mechanic, you know, that iconic fight scene with Indiana Jones and that very muscled up bald German plane mechanic. Plane mechanic, I would have totally gone with. That would have been a cool build a fig to have for this particular collection. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the Indiana Jones Adventure Series, these five figures from their first wave. I'm confident that because there's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out, that they're gonna be having uh, more releases, uh, more different uh, figures from different movies. So uh, anticipating what some of those are gonna look like, I think this should be good. But uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then please take a minute and uh, hit the like button. You know that it really uh, helps me and my channel. And of course, uh, subscribe if you would, that'd be great. And we will see you next time on Figured Out.